What's up mateys? This is Frank from Marsman Gaming, and today I will be reviewing The Sea of Thieves, The Legend of Monkey Island, The Quest for Guybrush. This is the second Tall Tale for this DLC series, and if you want to see our thoughts on the first Tall Tale, make sure to check out our previous review. When this chapter was announced, we were very excited to see where this adventure would take us. So we assembled the crew, grabbed some grog, and set sail back to Monkey Island. The questions arose, does this Tall Tale continue the charm of the classic game? Does it give you that pirate fun that we're all looking for, or is it more of those household chores that we dread. I give you the good, the bad, and our final verdict. Let's dive into it. But before we continue with the review, if you like gaming content, which includes reviews, opinion pieces, streams, of a variety of games, make sure to hit that sub button for future videos. And now back to the review. Let's start off talking about the good. The first thing that really stood out to me was the sandbox of Monkey Island. It felt like such a buzzkill in the first tall tale, how the majority of Monkey Island was blocked off by that damn mist. But this time around, we get to lift that mist and get to explore explore the rest of the island, and it did not disappoint. The island was large, had some diversity, whether it was jungles, open plains, mountains, a circus tent, some ships. It created a complex sandbox with the addition of this open area along with the city, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. The next big thing that stood out to me is the missions. When you think about being a pirate, what do you think of? For me, I am a huge Pirates of the Caribbean fan, and when I think of being a pirate, it's about sailing, treasure hunting, drinking, stealing, and fighting. And for this chapter, you get a majority of those aspects. Now, without spoiling too much, you go through trials that force you to use your pirate skills of treasure hunting, stealing, fighting, and you can even throw back a couple of drinks on your adventure. I enjoyed some of the clues and problem solving that you had to use to complete your missions, and most of the missions had multiple parts and phases. The missions were diverse and didn't feel like the exact same thing over and over again, or some of these household chores that felt like in the previous tall tale. The content lasted about three or four hours, which is pretty strong for this chapter. The final good I want to address is the charm of the characters and dialogue. The devs have done a very good job of capturing the classic Legend of Monkey Island characters and environment and putting them in the Sea of Thieves. The characters are unique. They bring their own quirkiness, jokes, the environment is very detailed, and fits both Sea of Thieves and the classic game. With the good, we have to talk about the bad. As much as I said I like the island's size, the diversity it has, this chapter at times can feel like a running simulator. The trials have multiple steps during your missions, and it has you running all over the island. There were moments I felt out of breath watching our characters run to one point of interest, to the next point of interest, to the next point of interest, with barely any interactions. Not having characters or creatures in between that you can maybe fight against, or interact with that can dull some of that constant running or even have the opportunity to sail to different mini islands made this a painful experience at times. Another bad thing I want to address is the insult sword fighting. And again, I won't dive into too many details, but one of the trials in this chapter is to master what they call insult sword fighting. This entails not only the normal Sea of Thieves sword fighting of blocking and attacking, but you're going to have to shoot insults and retorts during your fights. You learn more insults and retorts with the more pirates you fight along the island. The idea is very interesting, but the system is not executed well. For me, and I feel like many players also will suffer from this, there are very small cues and hints that they give you, but the hints and the systems are just not consistent. I found myself guessing most of the time and hoping that it would work. I ended up passing the trial after multiple times, but even to this day, I don't really understand how the system works. One final bet I want to address is the pacing of this DLC as a whole. This is not particular for this trial, as I do think it does a better job than the first trial, but now after playing Tall Tale 1 and Tall Tale 2, the content feels like it could have been blended a little bit better. I feel chapter 1 and 2 probably could have been combined, or in chapter 1, having to do some tasks before you can enter Monkey Island or enter the portal may have suited it a little better. Overall, the Sea of Thieves, the Legend of Monkey Island quest for Guybrush had both positives and negatives. I feel this tale showed us the wonders of Monkey Island and made the trials make us feel like a pirate compared to the previous tale. I addressed earlier, I do think Tall Tale 1 and 2 should have been combined given how short Tall Tale 1 was. I liked the size of the sandbox and the different trials, but felt at times I was training for a marathon, and to this day, I am still confused on the insult sword fighting system. I recommend trying this Tall Tale out with some buddies and some grog on hand, if you're of age, of course. I am giving the Tall Tale a 7 out of 10. Thank you everyone for watching. Please make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you like this kind of content. This is Frank from Marsman Gaming signing off. See ya.